Good morning, Hassan Bonani. Uh, I was given precisely 60 seconds. I've used 10 of them. Um, on your tables is a flyer which is headed International Leadership Institute. And it was um, our somewhat uh, relaxed attempt, <coughs> excuse me, at trying to move from a monologue about dialogue to the practice of dialogue. So what we have done uh, in, in New Zealand, it's, it's the only one that's being offered in New Zealand at the moment, is we, we have a four-day dialogue for educational leaders. Uh, the focuses are various. This coming year, uh, in March, we are, you'll see there that we have those conversations that count. Um, and the focus is on social justice in education and in leadership. Um, you would be in, in an environment very similar to the one you're in at the moment, um, where you have four days to sit back, relax, contemplate, reflect, think, explore, um, and generally do those things that people like Bakhtin, Gergen, and others have suggested that we ought to do on a more regular basis. If you'd like any more information on this, um, there's a brilliant young scholar who's speaking tomorrow morning. Uh, that's me, incidentally. Um, <laughs> Um, on a fairly extensive um, examination of the process. We, we did it as a, as a fairly substantial academic exercise, um, a, a research project. So I'm going to be reporting on that in the morning if, if you're interested in that. Uh, but essentially, if you are in or close to New Zealand or traveling around New Zealand at that time of the year, um, there's a four-day opportunity starting, I think it's the 10th of March. Thank you very much. Okay, well, without further ado, and we don't want to steal into any of our next wonderful keynote speakers' time, it's my great pleasure to bring to you um, a key mentor of mine, I must say, um, somebody who's been hugely influential in my own work, and I know many people in this room. Um, I can say, I could say a lot about Eugene, but really for now, all I want to say is, as many of you know, he's a leading scholar in the area of dialogic pedagogy. He's the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Dialogic Pedagogy. And as we learned from last night, he is Toastmaster extraordinaire. So uh, without further ado, over to you, Eugene. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me well? Okay, good. Uh, I'm sorry for the two-two-two, it's just because this is my computer there and it produced some noise. Uh, I'm trying to be very gentle and not touch it much. Uh, my presentation is about culture has no internal territory. This is a quote from Bakhtin, uh, from his uh, book about the stairs, it's a his footnote. And my addition to that culture is dialogue. And to some high degree, and we didn't coordinate with that, and uh, that it's uh, some kind of relate, uh, not some kind of, directly relate to the rooted uh, presentation yesterday. We didn't coordinate, uh, this way, right? No coordination. And I'm, maybe I'm not saying anything new because Robert already said everything. But um, maybe not, I don't know, because uh, the topic for me is still very difficult. Let me tell. Uh, my uh, puzzle. Uh, you know, in 2003, I had this arrogance of teaching graduate class on Bakhtin in education. Uh, to my kind of uh, excuse, it's the class was requ uh, requested by the graduate students. So they almost twisted my arms because I thought sometime, at least one year, I refused to do that because I said, I'm not sure I know enough to do that. So in that seminar, I put this quote from Mikhail Bakhtin uh, from that book on the stairs, that footnote. Uh, I, I will read it, so I will enjoy Russian accent one more time. Um, one must not imagine the realm of culture as some sort of spatial hole having boundaries, but also having internal territory. The realm of culture has no internal territory. It is entirely distributed along the boundaries. Boundaries pass everywhere, through the, its every aspect. The systemic unity of a culture extends in the uh, very atom of cultural life. 
It reflects like the sun in each drop of that life. Every cultural act lies essentially on the boundaries. In this, it's a, a seriousness and its significance. Abstracted from boundaries, it loses its soil. It becomes empty, arrogant, it disintegrates and dies. Um, and my students really like that. But I had a very evil Brazilian students. Do have Brazilian people here? Yeah, you guys, let me admit. Uh, so I have a very evil Brazilian student who, after cheating this uh, what by other students, he would say, Eugene, it sounds very nice, but what does it mean? Uh, she said, even say exactly, what the hell it means? <laughs> and I suddenly realized that I don't know. And so we might create a new law. Uh, at least for me, working for me, attraction before understanding. So uh, she kind of put me on this journey to try to understand what this uh, wonderful statement, very poetic, very attractive. There is, you feel truth in that, but then it's what the hell does it mean? Um, so uh, I tried to like, uh, and she said, can you give example? And I said, no. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, she set me on this uh, long journey. I'm not sure I finished the journey. I just want to share with you where am I right now. And maybe you will be ahead of that or in some other places. And uh, help. Okay, so this is my arguments that I would provide here. This is overview of my arguments in, uh, in case you will be lost. Uh, well, one argument I'm trying to just basically repeat what Bakhtin said, but I'm trying to say what does it mean. Okay. So one thing, um, I'm kind of look at the two different boundaries that I kind of started conceptualizing. One, synchronous boundaries, which more or less kind of create the idea of uh, culture. And another boundary is uh, uh, diachronics, which creates a kind of sense of history. So, and I'm kind of start claiming that boundary is nothing uh, but uh, as relational and uh, interactional breakdowns. And culture is not the breakdown itself, it's an interpretive frame on these breakdowns. Um, also, culture represented ten, uh, this is uh, easy to understand uh, the first statement about culture as a kind of synchronous statement, it's an interpretive breakdown. But it also has diachronous uh, tensions as well. And it's a tension uh, between ready-made given culture and uh, culture making. Uh, by the way, if you don't fully really afford that, that's, that's exactly right, because that's what I'm going to tell you. I'm just trying to say, so what does it mean? Um, okay, read the book. I'm, I'm from Utah, there are Mormon advertisements. Uh, so I'm full of Mormon advertisements. And, and I will tell you in a moment what I think it might mean. So, and culture in action, or culture in making, is a recognized transcendence of regular culture. And since I'm an educator. Uh, I'm more interested about educational issues rather than maybe some other issues. So I see education as uh, exactly this culture making, production, transcending, and not as traditionally uh, viewed as reproduction of culture. And also, uh, again, this is not my original point. There is a wonderful Russian uh, philosopher, uh, Bibler, Vladimir Bibler who focus on dialogue of culture, and I see that culture is the dialogue of cultures. Which, which again, very problematic, like culture, dialogue of cultures, so it's sort of like something pre-exists the other one. That doesn't make sense. Okay, I like my presentation. So this is my conceptual points, and this is kind of what uh, my uh, presentation will be like. And you can see Alexander Lavrov sent a message to me and probably to all of us. I, need to read. I don't have time to read. This is from Skype. I apologize. The Skype is working. I don't know how to switch it off. <laughs> you see, this dialogue of cultures. You see, we're here. He's in uh, Ekaterinburg, and we are like somewhere. I don't know where we are in the original space in that. Okay, uh, I will present a very interesting case. Uh, do we have uh, South African uh, colleagues here? Uh, yes. So you will correct me. Yeah. Uh, because it's a case in, it happens in South Africa, which I called Look at Me. And it's a, my interpretation of that case is a cultural mismatch. And this is what synchronous boundaries of cultures 
there will be breakdown there. Then I will uh, come try to conceptualize culture and discuss uh, uh, essentializing culture versus dialogic frameworks for the culture, concept of culture. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to go to um, another case, uh, very briefly, it's kind of building Creole communities in education, which I call, please uh, try to listen to each other. And this is the Afronis boundaries of cultures. And I give another uh, examples of promoting authorial agency. How can a teacher force students to do their homework? I call that case. Uh, the cases I will provide very, very, very sketchy, but I give you a printouts uh, so you can, uh, on your leisure time, not now because it's there too long. I hope you will not start reading them now, although they're very interesting. Uh, maybe by saying that you will immediately start reading, of course, now. Uh, but you can read them later. Uh, uh, in kind of full, uh, if you're interested in that. Also, you still can follow, uh, I put my presentation there, so for, uh, I remember when I struggled with English, it was much more easy for me to read rather than to listen. So you can complement this if, uh, if it works for you. Okay, uh, so this is the case uh, that I will start, that's called Look, uh, look at Me. I was in South Africa uh, several years ago, actually, three years ago, uh, with my students from, I brought my students from the University of Delaware as a study abroad in, um, mostly in January. And uh, we, my students work in school uh, in township nearby Pretoria. And um, uh, as, uh, as, again, scholars in the, from South Africa know that uh, it's beginning of school year there in January, sometimes in January. And it's very, unlike maybe, sorry, for my New Zealand colleagues here, it's rather hot there. Uh, so, um, I was actually going, uh, you know, uh, I was going with Peter Kahn, who just did a bit of my students, blah, 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 and there is some incident attracted my attention. Fortunately, for uh, this type of things, I realized that it may be something interesting before uh, actually, the whole things happen, and not after. So, which helped me to move camera there. So it's very non-professional. So I moved the camera on the people before whole things started. The sound is not very good. Uh, there is description. I can tell you what's uh, transcript of that. Uh, basically, uh, this is uh, to put the settings. Is this is beginning of the school year a day, and since it's very very hot there. Uh, uh, you know, they, they do a physical exercise at the beginning of the uh, school day. 